Hello and welcome to the show today. My name is Lauren Tolley and I would like to introduce Professor Gabrielle Severi. She is a te she teaches journalism here and is an accomplished journalist. I would also like to introduce Jaris McKins. He is a student here at Solano and works at a uh, library. Um, and so for my first question is going to be geared towards both of you and I'll start with you professor. Um, what is the importance of reading? Well, reading is very important, I think, especially now. Um, now that we've sort of stepped into this digital age, we're being bombarded by messages from all over the place. We're getting hit from, uh, with messaging from the internet, from advertisements, from television, from the radio. And as this world becomes more complicated and complex, I think it becomes more, imp more pr um, important for us to understand what these messages are and what you know what exactly what's coming at us and it becomes more important than ever to be able to uh, think critically and understand what these messages are um, so uh, reading is a really important part of this you know it has to do with consuming the media but it also becomes very important to be able to read and understand these messages coming our hmm. way and Jess? yeah like she said I think it's just something that it's uh, it's all throughout life where, I, to put it in a more personal level, it's like you need to learn how to read to, to drive. You need to learn how to read to make a, to do a job application, mm -hmm. to, to read your prescription. It's just something that as, a, as a, a human race, if you don't know how to read, you're really just left at a disadvantage compared to the, the community that you're in. It's just something that you really need to have to really be successful mm -hmm. as a whole. I and then, so going back to your comment about um, the internet and how it affects reading, you know, We've talked about info snacking before, kind of like getting these tidbits of media. Do you think that that uh, that like the internet as a media uh, as a way to like um, consume reading? Do you think that is detrimental to people's ability to make informed decisions? I'm not sure if it's detrimental. I think they found that people now are actually reading more than they ever have. We're not reading less, but we're doing it in a different way. So. Um, my understanding is that um, our brains are actually changing. As we step into this I internet age, um, we don't tend to read as deeply and as sort of contemplatively as we did before. Now we do do this info snacking where we just consume little bits of information. So I'm not sure it's detrimental. I just think that we're just starting to, you know, we're changing with the digital age. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a change. It's just a change. Although, in my classes, I talk about illiteracy versus illiteracy. Illiteracy, illiteracy is when people can't read, and illiteracy is when they make the choice not to read. So when people choose not to read, I think there could be problems because we're essentially giving away our power. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Do you, yeah. I think really it's be, it's created a situation where people start to decide what they want to read because of the you just see headlines on like Twitter and yeah. uh, news news websites and it's become a situation where people they aren't really reading the article they see the headline and they're just running with that to fit their narrative and it's like a situation where uh, because of we have so much information now that it's just you're constantly being bombarded with all this information that it's just you kind of kind of stay away from reading, honestly, yeah. in my opinion. It's for certain things, it's just like it's too much. Mm -hmm. And I th feel like that's a new thing with our technology age and how it's affecting readers. But I think it's just, it's a very uh, tricky situation because like she said, there are more people reading, but it's like, what truly are you reading? And are, are you reading, are you reading referable stuff? And are you reading stuff that's authentic and yeah. stuff like that? Well, and you mentioned like Twitter too, and talk about info snacking. I mean, Twitter is like a social media website that's based around headlines. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's still immensely popular. And so if that is like any, I mean, like defining factor of yeah. what society's like, right? Uh, Especially younger generations. Oh, yeah, um, so, Professor, do you find it's harder, and I know you teach a journalism class, but do you find it's harder to get to teach pe kids how to, like, get kids interested in novels? Well, um, initially, yes. What I found, I, you know, I do teach journalism, so I don't usually teach, you know, literature, but in my class I've been teaching 1984 by George Orwell. And initially, it's like pulling teeth. Nobody wants to read it. Everybody kicks and screams if I give them any assignments that are more than, you know, three or four. <laughs> Uh, pages long yeah. and now you know I think this book is so relevant especially with what's going on today that once I get them into reading it mm -hmm. they start to realize how important a book it actually was and 
and you know how much they can actually learn from it because it's still relevant. You know, writing it goes hand in hand with um, reading. Reading and writing go together, and uh, I think they see that there's still universal truths mm -hmm. that are important today. Mm -hmm. Even so, though this book was written in 1949. Uh -huh. So you think that like your time as a teacher from when you started versus now has like that initial startup, that difficulty of getting people interested in the book, has that changed at all or has that been it, like generally the same? I found that all along, I've been teaching here five years, that people just don't want to read, <laughs> period. You know, everybody's into Snapchat and Instagram <laughs> and Twitter and <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, yeah, and for sure. They really, I find, t you know, teaching journalism, they don't really know anything about what's going on in the world. But mm -hmm. once uh, I start pushing them, eventually they start to get more interested yeah. and they start reading articles and they get more interested as time goes on. Um, so Jairus, do you find that working at a library, there's a difference in how different age groups interact with books and read books? Oh, by far, I would say like, you have like a full older generation where it's like all they want to do is read books where it's like they, all they do they mainly just check out books and magazines and newspapers and stuff like that and then you have like the middle generation where it's like they do they, they also read books but then there's also the the online activity and then sadly we have the younger generation where solely what I've seen at the library that I work at it's they're almost anti-book like sadly it's creating a situation where it's like they only want to read things online and that's just a, a tricky subject to, to handle because it's like although they are reading online it's it's just not the literature like the books that you have in front of us here where it's like these classics that they they should be reading it's more like a uh, snapchat and twitter and mm -hmm. stuff like that articles like so that. you see a lot of kids just like lined up on the uh, oh, computers yeah, yeah, all, all the, the time. time all the time it's um, sad. So back to both of you, do you think that it's more important for kids to learn basic life skills like, you know, balancing a checkbook or what have you doing your taxes than it is to analyze literature, be media literate? Well, I think um, the world is changing. I think there's more of an emphasis now on money and, you know, uh, I mean, we're a capitalist country. So yes, I think there's a lot of emphasis on business and the economy and making money and it's important to balance your checkbook, but on the other hand, books are extremely important too because um, being able to read, I think, is extremely important because if you don't read, you're essentially giving away your power. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we live in a democracy that's based on this idea that we're an informed citizenry, that, um, you know, it's this idea there's freedom of the press and freedom of speech. And if people give away that power you know ultimately we need to vote for a democracy to survive we have to be able to go out and vote and be informed citizens mm -hmm. and if you're not reading and if you're not aware of what's going on in the world and if you're not media literate you're essentially giving away your power and you, we're just becoming passive observers so i think you know it's very important that pe people continue to read it's as important as balancing a checkbook or you know being mm -hmm. able to do finance or whatever yeah, like I like she said, I think it's like you got to try to make a like a best of both worlds type situation where it's like, although you know how to balance a checkbook, you also need to read because it's like she said, it's just it's such an important aspect of our lives. It's just if you don't know how to read and in this society, you're truly just letting letting the world live around you mm -hmm. and you're just not even becoming active and what what you can be because I, I remember you know when I was in high school everyone was like why don't they teach us like do basic home economic mm -hmm. kind of things why do I have to learn calculus or learn how to read books why do I have to read the Great Gatsby you know mm -hmm. but um, I like what you guys said so professor mm -hmm. what are um, some ways that you get students to in involve themselves in reading in the media and novels or really whatever just reading in general okay well specifically in my class um, what I do is I make students have news quizzes where they have to uh, stay informed. They have to read and consume the media. So I make them read, the, I make them get a, a subscription to the New York Times. I make them read the newspaper. I make them watch the news. I make them check out social media sites. So I'm trying to basically expose them to all the different types of media out there. So that, that's one thing I do. I think that once students start to realize how much there is out there, they realize that you know there's a whole world out there where they can get information from. Um, I make them do a media journal where they actually keep a, a record of all the different types of media that they've been consuming during a certain period of time. Um, I have assigned a book, 1984, you know, just because I think it's still so timely and apropos for what's going on in our world today. It was written in 1949, but I still think it's very relevant 
So I just do what I can, you know, I feel yeah. like I'm doing my public service and this is what I can do on a daily basis to make my students, I'm trying to make them as interested in the world as I possibly can mm -hmm. through reading and consuming different types of media. Um, so Jarius, like when you're in a class, what works for you? What, 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 do, what, what can teachers do that, that works for you to get you interested in whatever material they're teaching or, or books in general? Yeah, so if I try to think back to when it was really like teachers were trying to push reading onto me, I would say like what, what we get into at, at a, a young age is uh, we get set in these classic books that every kid has to read The Great Gatsby or every kid has to read these books that they, they don't really like or some like and some mm -hmm. don't. What I would say teaching wise, I would say uh, we should try to open the door into like reading what the student wants to read because I feel like that spark is really just what gets you to reading. Although like I, me personally, I've always liked to read, yeah. but for the people that I have talked to, it's usually not, they don't like to read. It's usually they're being forced to read something they don't mm -hmm. like. And once you get that spark around reading, it's, it's hard to lose. And I yeah. just think it's just, you have to switch up what we're learning. Yeah. And for me, I think, you know, I think reading and the learning process are pretty equivocal that they're yeah. very similar things. You know, every time you pick up a new book, you're going to be learning something new. And so I really like what you said about, you know, getting that spark going yeah. in people because if they're interested in reading, then they're interested in learning things. Yeah. And I think that really translates into like, you know, oh, yeah. wh how they do in school and the amount of effort and emotion and like passion they put into school. Yeah. Um, and so the final question, mm -hmm. how do you, what, what do you guys think the future of reading is? Well, I hope people will continue to read. I just think we're going to be reading in different ways. I think we're going to be consuming information in different ways. I mean, I think books will always keep, there will, they will always be relevant because they're important because they push us, it's sort of like pushing the envelope in a book, and books are able to express new ideas. And I think they're always going to be relevant. And uh, like I said earlier, reading and writing go hand in hand. So. I do think books are going to be continu uh, will continue to be read, but I do think we're going to be consuming the media in different ways as it evolves into something new. So you don't necessarily think that the shift from online reading from like paper reading is necessarily a bad thing, just a different thing. Yeah, I think it's a, it's just a different. It, you know, we're just sort of stepping into a different medium. Mm -hmm. We might be reading. You know, our brains might be changing and absorbing information differently, but I still think there's always going to be a space for the book. Mm -hmm and reading. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think that uh, we're just, as a society, we're moving really towards technology and like you see it in cars and I think where reading is going to go from, you have uh, hard, hardback books, I think it's going to shift to where it's going to be almost solely online and uh, although I don't really think that's a great thing I think it's just the way the way of the world and like you see like large magazines like the life just recently came out and they said that they're they're stopping all their printing and they're really? moving solely online that, yeah and, like a lot of other uh, known magazines like I think the Times came out and the New Yorker came out saying that in the future they're hoping or they're planning on stopping the paper uh, uh, post the actual printing of their magazine. So I just think it's gonna be a situation where we're, we're solely gonna get all our reading offline. And I just think it's a very delicate thing because as I spoke before, we have to really watch at where we're getting these sources. So just watch where you're reading and watch mm -hmm. what you're reading yeah, because yeah. it's like, you might see that headline, but then you really look at it and it's like, wow, this, yeah, well, this is taking Especially out online too, and anyone can post anything anywhere, right? Oh, yeah. You know, um, and so do you think that like, something's lost when people stop reading books and just directly like are reading things off a screen? I'm not sure things are lost. Well, I mean, I do think when you read a book, you sort of go to this deep, you know, cont contem contemplative kind of place, you know, you're using a different part of your, your brain, I think. And I think we're losing that ability to focus. Our attention spans, I think, are getting shorter and shorter. And people just don't even seem to have the the ability to sit still long enough to read a book. I mean, we're so busy and we're getting barraged by so many messages all the time. But um, I do think there's another whole exciting world that's starting to unfold because as we get into new types of media, you know, you've got virtual reality, you've got, you know, I know some newspapers are getting rid of their photo departments and they're going exclusively into video. So mm -hmm. I think there's another whole world that's opening up that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I fear that, you know, it's all going to become, uh, it will become a matter of just reading captions. You know, people yeah. now just read to read captions. But I do still feel that books have 
um, intrinsic value because they do have these universal truths. They do, they're always going to be relevant because of what they can teach us. Mm -hmm. And I just think they're not going to go away. I mean, we might be reading them on a Kindle or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they'll still be around. I, they'll still be around. So uh, I work at a library, so obviously I'm biased <laughs> yeah, to the, I, the, the paperbacks. I, understand but that. I think <laughs> I think it, you do kind of lose something because, like, uh, usually me, I, I'm super uh, easily distracted, and so I can't read on like a tablet or something like that. I'll just constantly look at something else. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more where it's like. Once you move online, you're losing like the jobs that are at these libraries where it's like, if you move everything online, it's literally libraries are gonna be dying. And that's one of the sad things of innovation, but that's just one of the th situations where I see the future going in the, in the near few years. But I think books will always be around. Yeah, yeah I like, still it, love the feel of a book, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, and even like, you know, if you're reading on like your phone or on an iPad, you know, get, I'll get all those little notifications yeah. and for me personally, I get that ding, just what? You know, exactly. automatically, and then I lost my place in the book and I have to reimmerse myself, so. Yeah, I think sometimes you just want to go somewhere quiet and just read, you yeah. know, where you're not getting hype, you're always getting stimulated by something. Uh, you know? Like throw the phone somewhere, huh? <laughs> yeah, and even if we lose novels, we'll also, we'll always have those fringe books. Like, uh, I know you like to backpack, so like, we'll always have those mapping books. Yep. Cause if you're out in the middle of nowhere, there's you're not gonna be able to uh, search up where <laughs> are we and true, stuff like huh? that. But I just That's think true. it's gonna decrease very, very largely because of the internet. All right, well. Thank you both for being on the show. And I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in with us. And remember, don't forget to go read a book. If you are interested in a career in sports broadcasting, whether you're commentating a live game, or hosting your own TV show, or working behind the scenes, then this is the class for you. For more information, contact Greg Poff that's me at Solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports. It's an education.